Good morning, traders. This is a live trade recap. I took three trades this morning. I have them all on video. We're going to go over everything right now. If you'd like to download some of the trading tools you'll see me use in this video, go to the YouTube Trading Armor homepage, click on the little Facebook icon. You can become a member of the trading group, click on files, and then you'll be able to download the trading plan, the trade tracking spreadsheet, the 2R calculator, all that good stuff. So as always, I start with Weeble open on the uh, markets pane. I click on top gainers and pre-market because that's when we're trading and click on all organized by volume. And then I'm only interested in the top three stocks. And if the number one is below 500 million share float size or less, then I'll put it on the watch list. And the other two must be below 100 or 110 million shares. So let's get to the trades. I think, um, yeah, so SOS and CBAT, they're still, this is now, it's now 5 a.m. Those are still the number one stocks. And um, that's what I traded. They were also number one right around 4 a.m. So that gives them more likelihood of uh, making new highs and continuing their trend. And that's why I trade them. So here's CBAT, which you can see is just making uh, all new highs and kind of trading out of nowhere. No one's been trading it for a while. The volume's been very low uh, yesterday and in the aftermarket up until the very end, it looks like. So that's always a good sign that uh, more buyers are going to come in and continue to push the stock higher. And that line is old from, you know, some previous trade from a long time ago, so that didn't actually mean anything. So basically what I'm doing here is uh, looking for an ABCD pattern and you could call this point A, that's the last candle from the aftermarket and then here's point B, so that's a new high. Now I'm just waiting for a pullback and as soon as, uh, um, actually this is a pullback right here on this candle so if this one made a new high I could enter there but I don't think that's what happened. I think there was still one more candle that formed. Yeah, so now you see I'm hovering over this candle. The high is 667, so I'm looking to get in at 668 or higher if the price breaks above that candle. And also I'm watching SOS because it's doing the same thing. Here is the high from the previous session, so obviously it's trading above that. And you could call this point A or this point A if you want. And then B is up here. And now it's making a pullback, so I'm waiting for a new high to give me a signal to enter on that one. So I'm watching both at the same time. And again, over here we're looking for 668 or better, so I'm watching this bubble. And I hit refresh once in a while just to make sure that the chart is uh, forming properly. It usually is, but uh, you know, like once in a once in a while, there's a, a glitch, and you know that way I know that what I'm seeing is really there. There we go. So you see how it, this thing just pushed up real fast there. So about when it said 670 was when I hit my buy hot keys and it was moving so fast. This is not really a Weeble issue. I think probably no matter what platform that you're trading with, even if it was something like Lightspeed or eSignal or whatever, um, that the same exact thing would have happened because this is a function of the buyers pushing the stock up and also the fact that it's a lower float stock so there's not so many shares at each price level so all these buyers are coming in pushing the price up and you try to get in and I buy with a three cent offset so this means that when I hit my buy keys the price was at 673 even though we saw it 670 and it already was above my offset, which was 676 by the time um, my order got placed out there. So that's just because the price was moving very fast. And then you see what happens there on the way back down. It, it comes and fills me. So my stop loss is the low of the previous candle that I entered on. That's where I consider the trade failed if it drops below that point. It's very important that you identify a stop loss before you enter the trade. I don't always know the price um, of the stop loss, but I know where it is graphically on the chart because I know that if the price comes below that previous candle, then uh, I need to stop out. So here I'm using my 2R calculator, putting my actual entry and my stop loss in. That gives me a profit target of 784. And then now I'm watching uh, SOS 
because it looks like it's going to give me an entry. Right now the top of these candles are the same exact price. So I want to see 628 or better and then I get in and same thing the stop loss becomes the low of the previous candle. Let's fast forward a little bit. There we go. Let's just see when that happened. There. So you see it kind of bounced up to 628 so that was enough to uh, make me enter the stock or enter the trade and then uh, my like I said my stop loss is the low of that candle which looks like it was 615 so that gives me a profit target of 654 So a couple things to note at this point is uh, it looks like SOS is doing really well. It looks like it's going to hit my profit target. I mean, there's nothing for me to do anyway at this point. I'm just pointing that out. Um, no matter what, there's only two possible outcomes for my trades. Either they get stopped out at that uh, minus 1R or I take the uh, profit target at 2R. And that's it. There's no in-between. There's no me judging, oh, this may be it for the the trade is not going to go any higher and we pull my profit target down. I used to do that stuff for months and months and uh, I was always red uh, at the end of every, well, you know, maybe not every month, but I was red overall <clears throat> and uh, it just seemed like it was going to get worse and worse and worse. So obviously the scaling out and trying to judge whether or not the uh, trade is going to work out is not a long-term recipe for successful trading once you've entered the trade, you know, there should be good reason why you entered, like the setup, you know, which, the, like I said, these are both very strong setups. So now it's just a matter of letting the uh, trade play out. And my only job is either to let it hit the profit target or stop out if I have to, if it hits my stop. Which that that's what looks like is going to happen here on CBAT. And the stop, I believe, this one is pretty interesting the stop was 622 on that one. So well, let's watch what happens here. I think it's on this candle and I don't want to give it away because it's pretty interesting. And look at this guy. Like just, just under my profit target by five cents. Oh, look at that. Do you see that? I'm going to back that up one more time. Now this is where following your rules and your plan and your discipline and all that stuff matters the most. In fact, that's the theme for this month <laughs> so far is uh, no matter what, you know, you take your stop losses. So my stop loss is 622 or lower, of course. But uh, ideally 622, and as soon as it drops below that red line, I have to get out no matter what. So look, it just flushed down. That's a function of the spread, and probably, you know, someone sold a whole bunch of shares at once. Or shorted, you know, a bunch of shares at once. Because you see, just a second earlier, the spread was only three cents. And then all of a sudden it goes to 18, 19 cents. And there's nothing for me to do here but get out because obviously it dropped below, you know, it hit my stop loss. And I don't know if it's going to bounce back up uh, or if it's going to continue lower. You're really taking a chance waiting for a bounce because uh, there's no guarantee of that and it could just continue to flush down. So I get out immediately as soon as I see that happen. Let's watch that one more time in real time so you can see the you know, that I didn't hesitate. I definitely was shocked. I'm going to be honest. I was shocked when I saw that. I said, whoa. I, I've, in fact, you know, I've been trading this plan now for like five months, and this is the first time that I've been stuck in a flush like this. So let's watch in real time. There it goes. And then, you know, I was stunned and I hit, hit my profit. I mean, I hit my sell all button pretty quickly there. When you see the there was a little flash up there that indicates I hit my sell all keys, but so very little hesitation other than just, I think the initial shock kind of it caught me off guard. And, uh, so I got filled at the very bottom of that candle, which is unfortunate, but it doesn't matter. I have to do what my plan and my strategy says, which is as soon as my stop loss is hit, I get out no matter what. And now 
so the uh, next thing as part of my plan this thing hasn't dropped down below point a yet which is the bottom of this candle excuse me so i have to look for the next entry which will be uh, the next time a one minute candle makes a new high which looks like it's happening right here i forget if that was the case or not no, i think it's one more candle later and look what's going on over here on sos the uh, price is now well below my entry so i canceled this order because if uh it stops me out and that order's there it won't let me get out it'll think that i'm trying to short the stock because it's going to see a sell order for 11 shares here and then i'm going to be putting out another sell order for uh another 11 shares basically so you have to cancel those before you need to stop out And it's nice to have that to our calculator because sometimes you know i forget exactly what the stop is or i just want to confirm <clears throat> so try to imagine yourself in these trades you know and think about what you would do would you have the discipline to stop out when these things come down below there there's the entry on the next one um that one that candle made a new high so i have to enter as part of my plan it's not a choice um there's nothing subjective going on here if it's still a good abcd pattern here's point a so we're, we're you know it never came down below it then i have to uh, take the next entry and that's what that is so this uh, trade is much lower risk than the first one, and that's just as a, a because of the way the chart formed. That's a function of the chart only, and uh, if it if it wins, it's a smaller win than that previous loss. But also, if it loses, it's a smaller loser. So that you know, it's a kind of a win-win in that that regard. So there's my entry and my stop loss and my profit target. And you can see the risk percentages there. And often those higher risk trades work out more often than the uh, the lower risk ones, believe it or not. At least so far in my experience, that's what I'm seeing. But today that wasn't the case, obviously. So here I'm just putting out my profit target line for reference. So again, you know, I get into the trade and it looks promising, looks like it's going to gonna hit but then it comes down below I cancel the order just in case I have to stop out but it hasn't hit my stop yet so I just have to wait same thing now over here it's on the uh, stop line there no hesitation whatsoever this is when following your plan your strategy not breaking your rules is extra important is when the trades aren't working out now these are both great setups all the criteria is met 100% there's no compromises I don't do that anymore if the tr if the setup is not perfect I don't take it because you could see that even these perfect setups fail so that's when it becomes extra crucial that you take your stops because you could easily talk yourself into saying well these are such strong setups it must work out and I can't afford to take any more losses I've already taken a bunch of hits this month and I really need these trades to work out and so on and so on and before you know it you're writing these things way down and you're in a huge hole and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that not that that happened to me because I took look you see I took my stop without hesitation and I'm out exactly where I wanted to be on that one no slippage the first one I did suffer a lot of slippage but that was completely out of my control and that's the exception to the norm that doesn't normally happen if it was the norm then I wouldn't be trading like this because it's not sustainable so fast forwarding here a little bit and again this one's teasing me like okay it's gonna work out but you know I don't really I'm not judging it in the middle I just kind of I guess maybe gives you a little more hope when you see the price above but either way you know my job is just to put out my profit target order when the price gets to a certain level and uh, hit or hit or execute my stop so now look what happens this thing continues lower again imagine 
what would you have done in that trade? Would you have bought into the idea that while wow, this setup is so good, it's so strong, there was so much volume in the beginning, this trade has to work out. So I'm going to hold and hope. And now, you know, the thing is going against you. And then you see this green candle and you're still holding and hoping and you're thinking, oh, this is it. This is why I held and, uh, and hoped because look, now it's coming back and I, I did the right thing. Because, uh, you know, why, why do you want to give your money to the stock market? Well, now look what's happening. And it just keeps going down and down and down. So there's no, you know, there's no rules for the stock market. Even the best setups can fail and do fail. <clears throat> it doesn't care, you know, how much money you've, uh, you've lost. It'll take more. <laughs> there. So on the uh, CBAT trade, I'm watching it very closely here because I know one thing to, to be aware of is the spread. So even though it's two cents above my stop loss, the spread is going from two cents to like four cents and eight cents. So it could in one second, just like it did earlier, um, flush down this two cent little uh, buffer doesn't mean anything. So just trying to show you the stop on that one in real time. There, and then, so yeah. So originally it just had hit hit that line, which is not my stop. Once it goes below it, that is my stop. And you see I stopped out again without hesitation. There's no need to say, oh, I've already lost two trades. One of these has to work out. They just have, it just has to. I'm going to hold and hope and, and uh, I know it'll come back up. That's how you blow up your account. So um, yeah, just, I think I made the point clear. So let's look at the damage today, which again is not my fault. It's just the way things went. I followed my plan and my strategy 100%, and that's why the losses aren't even larger. So that's today, minus $11.81, which is a considerable amount considering the size of the account. But even with that crazy um, flush that I got into on CBAT, that one trade was like a loss of over $9. This, there's two trades in here. Even with that unexpected flush down, I lost twice as much as I was expecting to lose on that trade. I'm down minus 1.66%. So even less than a 2% uh, 2 loss in the account, which I don't want to see a 2% loss. But um, that's kind of the gold standard you know, for day trading. But again, those are guys with margin accounts, and I'm not trading margin. So I shouldn't be going by those standards, and neither should you. And let's take a look at the spreadsheet. Actually, let me show you the orders just so you know everything is on the up and up for today. There's the total loss for today. I think, yeah, you already saw that. So there's the orders, three trades in total, just like I showed you in the video. And there's no revenge trading. You know, I don't go, oh my gosh, I just lost three three more trades. I got to get some money back. Let me just keep keep trading, even though my plan says I only get three chances. Nope. Three, three strikes, you're out. That's it. Otherwise, I mean, what if I take the fourth and the fifth and they lose, you know, and that does happen. So, so here we are and, uh, you know, with another three, three losses in a row day and there's nothing, absolutely nothing to do other than to continue to follow the plan and the strategy because I have all this data saying that this strategy works as long as I follow it a hundred percent. If I start deviating at all, then I screw up my odds and I screw up my probability of uh, being green and I may not be green this month this may be a red month but even traders professional retail traders that have very strict plans and follow them 100% they have red months red months once in a while and it's part of trading so the only thing you can do is continue to trade the exact same way every single day and hopefully things kind of come back around for you um, last month was a great month. I made over 10% on the account, which is great for a small cash account and only trading with 10% on each trade, just like I am this month. But even still the win rate was 55%. So that goes to show you, you know, that these trades, uh, can and do fail. 
And, um, you know, the probability doesn't go up just because you're taking more trades. It's just like a coin toss. A coin, a fair coin has a 50% chance of heads or tails each time you flip it. Not It doesn't mean, you know, if you got um, five heads in a row that the next one is more likely to be tails. No, it still has a 50% chance of, of being heads. So same thing here. If, if, if this ends up being like a 55% overall, um, win rate or probability on this type of trading that means every single trade that I take has a 45 percent chance of losing again no matter how many that I take so the only thing I think that does increase the probability of the trades working out as I continue and that's why I take through up to three is that um, oftentimes the stocks will eventually reverse you just hope it happens before your three trades are up uh, kind of like SOS did eventually, but notice it didn't get anywhere even near my stop. But this is, you know, this is a bad example because this isn't, you know, really what I'm talking about. You have to kind of imagine this happening before, um, not only before the three trades are up, but before it breaks down below the A, uh, point A, because I wouldn't be trading this anyway because this is a reversal, which is always a low probability of working out. And you can see that here, like, uh, this one failed, this one failed, right? And then finally, uh, finally, this one worked. So that's why I don't trade those. You're taking a bunch of losses before one actually works out. But just pretend that this was, you know, up higher on the chart. And this was be before the ABCD pattern failed. Then, uh, you know, right here, this trade would have worked out. So that's the idea. Again, bad example, but that's the idea behind taking uh, three trades is trying to catch something like that before the pattern fails. So anyway, I think I went over everything. And again, just want to reiterate that even when things are bad like this, the only thing you can do is continue to follow your plan and your rules and uh, just ride these rough waves out until uh, things get better again. So let me know if you have any questions. Always take your stop losses, no matter what. Otherwise, you could end up, look at, look at where this thing is now. It's still even even with this nice little run back to the upside it is still 15 uh, about 25 cents below my stop loss let alone nowhere near my my target and uh, we're an hour and a half into when I first got into this trade so imagine if I was just sitting here holding and hoping this thing I would be kicking myself right now so all right always take your stop losses honor your profit targets and in the long run maybe not this month, maybe not this week, but in the long run, you should be green. Take care.